Hey guys, it's Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. First of all, I want to announce that my Battle of Zama Kickstarter has been funded, but it's the Kickstarter is still going on for another 21 days or so, so if you want to get a steep discount on the price of the game, please consider backing it. Alright, so this is B-17 Queen of the Skies from Avalon Hill. Let this game be a lesson to people. I was at a convention, and there was a table there where the guy had no price tags, and he was just one of these making an offer people. And as I've told you guys in the past, whenever someone tells you to make an offer, uh, always lowball them, uh, assuming you want to do business with them at all. Sometimes I don't want to do business with people who don't put price tags on their merchandise. So I said, okay. I said, all right, how about 10 bucks? And he gives me kind of a... A, a dirty look, and he's like, well, well, he's like, oh, I, I don't know, I guess I can do 15, so I said, fine, so I got it for 15 bucks, but the thing is, if he would have had price tags on the damn game, I would have been willing to pay 30, 35 dollars for this, so that just goes to show, always put price tags on your products so you don't get low bold. so let's see what this is all about. Queen of the Skies is the Avalon Hill Game Company's new strategy game which recreates the bombing missions and aerial combat of the B-17 Model F bombers of the U.S. 8th Air Force over Europe between November 1942 and May 1943. This was a critical initial period for the American heavy bombers when the green crews had to quickly learn their jobs and prove the feasibility of daylight bombing. It's primarily designed as a solitaire game. It says it takes 15 minutes to one hour. That's kind of cool. Uh, complexity rating from 1 to 10, where 10 is the highest, uh, 3, so it's low complexity. Alright, inside we got some cards here. Different German fighters and stuff. And here's the counters, he already has them sorted. Spray fire, oxygen fire. I'm not sure what ace, oh ace, yeah. Fighter breaks off, minus two. Tail gunner. Extinguisher. Engine with an X on it, which I assume means your engine is out. Light wounds, serious wounds. All right, includes two six-sided dice. Here's the mission record. He's got a few of these in here. I assume he photocopied them or something. I think this is what you use if your uh, waist section of your aircraft is hit or your tail section or nose bomb bay. Hits on the pilot compartment or the radio room. Even got a landing and water chart here. That's cool. G11 Flight Log Gazette here. Here's your mission target chart. Formation position chart. Fighter cover chart. Controlled bailout. Bailout from uncontrolled plane. Bailout over water. Landing on land. I think this is for when your wing gets hit here. Here's if you take instrument damage. And here's wounds on crew members. And it looks like crew members can even get frostbite. That's true, those guys sometimes did get frostbite because it was so cold up there, especially uh, in the winter time, I would assume. All right, here's a rules uh, booklet. We'll get to that in a minute. Here's your mission chart. There's a whole bunch of them here. Keep track of the target city, mission number, bomber name, target type, uh, posi your position and formation, fighter waves, and uh, here's notes on your crew members. And you keep track of ammo too. That's cool. Alright, here's uh, one thing the guy had already filled out. Looks like this is the original mission record, the one he's been photocopying. Here's the crew placement board. Area damage tables. Depends on what clock you're being attacked from. 
number of German fighters and waves, uh, number of German fighter waves and designated target zone, shell hits by area, successive attacks, and random events table. Here's your weather table, flak over target, flak to hit B-17, effect to flak hits, uh, area affected by flak hits, bomb run, and bombing accuracy. And here's some er errata on the back. Here's your st strategic movement board. Looks like you can reorder log pads if uh, assuming Avalon Hill was still in business. <laughs> Here's a search board. Mission chart the guy had filled out. And here's some errata and stuff he got online. Here's a game flow chart uh, that he, he must have got this off uh, online too. All right, let's look at the map here. Here's your B-17. Here's your defensive fire table. German offensive fire, fighter cover defense, area spray, uh, fighter pilot damage status and hit damage against German fighter table. And this shows the different clocks you can be attacked from. Alright, let's look through the rules here. When I glanced through the rules, it looked like it was only about 10 pages of rules before it got into like an example turn. Alright, here's just explain the counters. Now let's talk about the game tables, and uh, here's your sequence of play here. Combat procedure, boarding the mission, defensive fire. Here's your heat out and frost, which will give you frostbite rules. It's got rules if uh, your oxygen goes out. Yeah, that'd be a problem if you're above about uh, 15,000 feet. Replacing wounded crew members, evasive action. And here's your random events table. All right, now it has a sample mission here. All right, guys, just wanted to show you this. I've been looking for another solitaire game to play, and I've been playing Lawrence of Arabia today, and it's not holding my interest very well, so hopefully this will when I get a chance to try it. Have a good evening.